Isn't one of the things that made Rocket Richard such not only a prolific goal scorer, but such an efficient one? I've heard that he scored more frequently per shots, per number of shots than anyone else, although no one ever kept that statistic. But you have said, and you can see, Morris, you can see in, even in the brief film, that you don't have any pre-plan when you're coming in on a goaltender. You don't even know which corner you're going for. It's one thing I didn't have in my mind. I know when we had six teams in the league, and most of the goalkeeper, they used to know all the players that they played against. And most of the hockey players in the league in those days, they, they used to make the, about the same play. They had two or three plays to try to beat the goalkeeper or to, or to shoot at the goalkeeper. Today it's hard for a goalkeeper because, because they don't play against uh, the, the players enough. They only play three and four games during the season. I mean, in, our, in our days, they, they used to know the players. And there's one thing about me and maybe Gordie Howe and maybe a few guys in the league, we didn't even know ourselves what we were going to do. I was trying to change my play every time I had a chance. I, was to, I, I changed my mind at the last moment, the last uh, second. And that's why, probably because uh, I didn't know what to do, that uh, I was uh, scoring more goals than anybody else. Ken, who are the, the, who are the people in the league now who come closest to that ability to, to ad-lib and create as they come in on a goaltender, who are unpredictable? Well, are there I, any? There are some, um, and I think just as, as Rocket said, that, that really is what distinguishes the outstanding goal scorer from the mediocre to poor one, uh, that they, the poorer ones will have one or two moves, and that's it. And uh, it, you, can, you can tell very well now through, pra in, you know, through practices. When, when I'm out there in practice, you often get into very bad habits because you see the same people every day, and they do almost the same thing every day on every shot. And it's the people like Lafleur or Lemaire or Shutt that don't do that every time. Is there any tension between the players at all? The situation, it seems to me at least, with the Canadians is such that, that we've gone beyond that point. I don't, I don't know whether there was a stage at which you felt so defensive and so released from the, the, the defenses that you blatantly talked black-white and, and, and couldn't talk about anything else, and most of your humor was, was based on that. I don't know whether it existed at one point, but it doesn't exist now. Yeah, I was, but I was with Canadian. I was 18 years with Canadian, and I don't think I saw one argument between the French or English uh, on, in the room. And we always had a good time. We were all, I was, myself, I used to go out with English boys all, all the time because at the beginning I couldn't say a word of, uh, of English then. And uh, I used to go out with them, and uh, there was never anything that happened, never any argument in all the 18 years I was with the team. So uh, I think it's the same way today. Uh, I mean, we, we have our arguments, but they're not yeah. culturally or linguistically based in any way. Let, let me do two quick things and say, say quickly, what was the language of the dressing room in your day, Morris? Either uh, one? 90% was English.